Listening to Rebelpreneur Radio, helping you break the rules and build the business you need for the life you want. And now, broadcasting his pirate signal from somewhere beyond the status quo. Here's your host, best-selling author, marketing and media strategist, Ralph Brogdon. Hello and welcome to Rebelpreneur Radio. It's the show that helps you build the business you need so you can live the life you want. I am Ralph Brogdon. You know, there is a tremendous shift going on in business today, and we've talked about it on other episodes of Rebelpreneur. It's a shift that every business owner, influencer, and rebelpreneur will want to pay attention to. It's always going to be true that people want to do business with people that they know, like, and trust. But what I think is shifting is the idea that your business exists um, just to extract as much money and profit and sales from your customers as possible or to give them equal value in exchange for equal monet, uh, monetary gain in return. The paradigm shift is that businesses, organizations and brands that experience the most success are doing it not by taking value, but by creating value, not trying to maximize what they receive, but maximize what they give. And that's the competitive advantage that I want to give you today. And that brings me to today's guest, Mr. Bob Berg. He is a sought after speaker at company leadership and sales conferences, sharing the platform with everyone from today's business leaders and broadcast personalities to even a former U.S. president. Bob is the author of a number of books on sales, marketing, and influence with total book sales of well over a million copies. His book, The Go-Giver, co-authored with John David Mann, has sold over 850,000 copies and has been translated into 28 languages. Bob and John's newest parable is the Go Giver series. In the Go Go Giver series is the Go Giver influencer. Bob is an advocate, supporter, and defender of the free enterprise system, believing that the amount of money one makes is directly proportional to how many people they serve. He is also an unapologetic animal fanatic, and he is a past member of the board of directors of Furry Friends Adoption Clinic and Ranch in his town of Jupiter. Florida. Bob Berg, welcome to Rebelpreneur Radio. Hey, Ralph, great to be with you. I really, uh, I, I have your book on my desk. I read it several years ago and it made a deep impression on me. And it's still Thank making you. an impression today as I really get to the heart and soul of who I am as a business owner, a business leader, an influencer. Uh, it's the first in the series of the Go Giver series, the Go Giver, as opposed to the Go Getter. So, um, just a way to, to kick off the conversation. Uh, give us kind of an overview. What is the Go Giver all about? Sure. And it's a, uh, it's a business parable. Uh, so it's, it's essentially a work of fiction, but based on principles that are tried and true. And many of the stories within the book actually happened. Uh, but we put them all together as as one single uh, fictional story, co-authored with John David Mann, who really is the lead writer, you know, the lead storyteller. I'm a how-to guy. I'm step one, step two, step three. And, <laughs> and so John uh, John's the guy who really made this thing sing. But really, the the the, uh, the premise of, of the book is that shifting your focus, and this is so key, shifting your focus from getting to giving. And when we say giving in this context, we simply mean constantly and consistently providing immense value to others and understanding that doing so is not only a, a, a more pleasant way of conducting business, it's the most financially profitable way as well. And you alluded to this in your opening remarks and talking about the shift Many businesses, they're focusing on how much value they can provide, not how much they can take, because, you know, it's not just out of the goodness of their heart. They realize, they understand that, you know, remember, in, a, in, in the, the, the basically free market economy in which most of us operate, when I say free market, I mean no one is forced 
to do business with anyone else. Mm -hmm. Okay. They do it by choice. That opposed to when we have the uh, cronyism, you know, where you've got either big businesses, big industries, special interests who buy favors from government that kind of keep the competition out. That's not free market. Free market is what most of us, (laughs) you and I, and, and, you know, everyone listening, that's what, that's what we're involved in. No one has to buy from us. And so I often, when I speak at a conference, I'll kind of jokingly say, you know, no one's going to buy from you because you have a quota to meet. <laughs> right. And right. And everyone laughs because we all know that's true, right? They're, they're not buying from us because we need the money uh, because we have a quota and they're not going to buy from you because you're a really nice person. They're going to buy from you only because they believe it'll be in their best interest to do so. And that's the only reason anyone should buy from you or from me or for, from anyone else. So what a go-giver understands is that to the degree that we can give this person such immense, an immensely valuable, wonderful, fantastic experience, okay, so that they feel they receive much more in value than what they paid, while, of course, we make a very, very healthy profit, uh, that's the degree that everyone comes out ahead. As one of my old mentors, Harry Brown, used to say, in a free market-based exchange, there are always two profits, the buyer profits and the seller profits, because each of them come away substantially better off afterwards than they were before. Mm. And, and that is the win-win paradigm that Stephen Covey probably uh, popularized. Uh, that uh, it, yeah, it's that not about a great book. Yeah. And that, that really influenced me, you know, 25 years ago, um, seven oh, yeah, habits of highly effective people. Um, mm-hmm. and, and that, that's really a great foundation for this principle of the go giver, uh, creating win win. And win win is not how much money can I extract from you using every sales and marketing technique in the book. And that is why I think, uh, Mind, the mindset of the consumer has shifted and therefore brands, companies, organizations, uh, even nonprofit organizations, we have to go back and really think about what value are we adding? How are we giving value? And so then that leads to the next question. Um, you, you talked about value that is so much more than the exchange of money, so much more than price. How do we quantify that value? What does that consist of? Well, I think it's important first to to really look at the difference between price and value. Uh, because, you know, as law number one, and the go-giver says your, your true worth in the business sense is determined by how much more you give in value than you take in payment. But you know, what does that mean? I mean, that you think about that, that sounds like a recipe for bankruptcy. <laughs> yeah. You have more in value than you take in payment. So, right. so we simply have to understand the difference between price and value. Uh, price is a dollar figure. It's um, a dollar amount. It's, it's finite. It simply is what it is. Value, on the other hand, is the relative worth or desirability of a thing, of something to the end user or beholder. In other words, what is it about this thing, this product, service, concept, idea, what have you, that brings so much worth or value to another human being that they will willingly pay for it and be glad they did while you make a very healthy profit? You know, it's it's paying the accountant uh, to do your taxes and the accountant charges you $1,000. That's his or her price. But what's the value they provide? Well, they save you $5,000 in taxes. They save you countless hours of time, and they provide you and your family with the peace of mind and security of knowing it was done correctly, right? And mm-hmm. so, uh, yeah, and this is, and, 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 and so you feel great about it because you got much more in value than what you paid, but the accountant made a very, very healthy profit because to this accountant, it's well worth it to lease out their time and knowledge and wisdom for that, that thousand mm, dollars. Great, great illustration. And, the, the one I like to use is something that actually happened to me a few years ago, and it's probably happened to – maybe it's happened to you, Bob, and maybe it's happened to some of our listeners where it's a weekend and all of a sudden your um, your toilets are not working the way they are supposed to, and you realize you've got to call a plumber, and it's the weekend. And, you know, in that situation – Whatever they charge, I'm going to pay because I can't exactly. go without it, right? <laughs> so 
uh, value is, is, as you said, relative worth, but it's also relative to the, the crisis that I happen to be in. A plumber on Saturday night is going to cost me more, but he is a lot more valuable to me when I've got an actual plumbing problem compared to when everything is going just fine. Yeah, it, exactly. And it's also very important to, you know, to understand that value is always in the eyes of the beholder. So as the salesperson or entrepreneur, we need to understand that, that it's not important what we find to be a value about our product or service or what we think they should think is a value. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's the, discovering what's a value to them. And that's why selling is, is so important because what is selling? Selling by definition is simply discovering what the other person wants, needs, or desires and helping them to get it. Mm. And, and, you know, so that discovery process is determining what exactly about our product or service is valuable to that person because it may not be what's valuable to the salesperson. Now, I can think of times when salespeople have tried to sell me a product or service and they were, they were focusing on, let's say, the low price. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now there are people who buy only on price, but very few of them, by the way. I mean, most, mostly even those who think that price is their determining factor. Typically it isn't because, you know, how often have you gone in to buy something, at, uh, and you wanted the lowest price, but then a, a good salesman or saleswoman helped you to see where what you really wanted was another product that was better and mm -hmm. was a higher price, but you feel, felt okay. But nonetheless, there are some who, who really are price buyers. Uh, I'm really not, not that I don't, you know, not that I want to pay extra more than I, I need to, but <laughs> price is not my determining factor for some people. It's status. And that's not really me for some people. It's, they love the bells and whistles. Totally not me. My thing is convenience. I'm a convenience buyer. In other words, I'm lazy. Okay. Mm -hmm. So to sell me on something, uh, you've got to make sure to communicate to me that it's not gonna, um, mess up my day. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, but I, but I recall people who sold me on, were trying to sell me on price. Why? Well, that's how they were trained or that there was their price buyer or what have you. Well, they were selling based on what they found to be a value, not what I found to be a value. Hmm. And we see this all the time. We see a salesperson say, Oh, what I like most about this is the so-and-so. Well, that's fine, but that's not really that important. What's important is what is this person? like the most about it? What mm. would they be using it for? How do they see themselves involved with this? You know, and that is so important to get out of our own world and get into right. the, to the head, the heart, the feeling of the person that we're trying to uh, communicate with. And we, we usually end up going in a different direction than the direction that we intended because the, the idea of go of being a, a go giver, it's not about, um, trying to put things off on other people that I want them to have. It's discovering how I can add value. And we're actually talking about the first of five laws of stratospheric success that you reveal in the book. And for, if you haven't read the book, uh, these are open secrets, right? They're not things that, that you're keeping hidden, uh, waiting for the, the, uh, the the big uh, compensation, but you're actually giving away. And we'll talk about what those five laws of stratospheric success is. But it's all about uh, implementation and and uh, communicating these things that, as you say, are not new, but are seldom practiced. Um, oh, would you, right. Would you mind walking through us? Uh, walking through these five laws of stratospheric success for us, for, for those who haven't sure. had the benefit of the book yet, and also to refresh those of us who have been through the book, I, I would just love to hear your synopsis. Sure. Uh, the, well, the five laws themselves are the laws of value, compensation, influence, authenticity, and receptivity. We, we sort of covered law number one, Mm -hmm. uh, which is that your true worth is determined by how much more you give in value than you take in payment. Uh, again, doesn't mean you don't make a profit. You make a great profit. Go-givers tend to actually be on the upper end of the price structure because uh, a go-giver sells on high value 
rather than low price. Hmm. Um, but it's all about focusing on the other person. This is why we say that money is an echo of value, right? So the focus <laughs> is on the, on, the, on the value. The money you receive is simply a natural result of the value you provide. Now, law number two, the law of compensation, says your income is determined by how many people you serve and how well you serve them. So where law number one says to give more in value than you take in payment, law number two tells us that the more people whose lives you touch with the exceptional value you provide, the more money with which you'll be rewarded. So your accountant in the first example, who charged you a thousand dollars and saved you 5,000 plus the peace of mind and all the other, you know, uh, you probably are, are very happy with that person. You would recommend that person. You do business with them again. Well, there, his or her other clients feel the same way. So that accountant is very quickly amassing what we call an army of personal walking ambassadors. <laughs> and as that accountant continues to uh, touch the lives of more and more people with the exceptional value they provide, their their income will continue to grow and grow. Hmm. Law number three is the law of influence. And this one says your influence is determined by how abundantly you place other people's interests first. Now, you know, again, this sounds counterintuitive when you first hear it, maybe counterproductive, perhaps downright Pollyanna ish. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and yet, you know, you think about it and, uh, you know, the, the great, and Ralph, you know, this, the, the greatest leaders, the top influencers, the, the biggest money producing salespeople, this is simply how they run their lives and conduct their businesses. They're mm. always looking out for the other person's interest. They're always looking to, to, to bring, uh, value to others. Now, I, I want to qualify this statement though, because I think this is very important and it's, it's sort of easy to, to misunderstand. When we say place the other person's interest first, we don't mean you should be anyone's doormat uh, or that you should uh, be a martyr, right, or, or self-sacrificial. Absolutely not at all. Mm. It's simply that, uh, as Joe, the protege in the, in the parable, learned from several of the mentors, the golden rule of, of business is that all things being equal, people will do business with and refer business to those people they know, like, and trust. Mm -hmm. And there's simply no faster, more powerful, or more effective way to elicit those feelings toward you in others than by genuinely moving from, and you, you uh, uh, kind of talked about this earlier, which I thought was great, moving off of yourself, moving from that, what we would call I focus or me focus to an other focus. Looking to, as, as Sam, one of the mentors advised Joe, to make your win all about the other person's mm. win. And, and you know, and you, when you do that, you really yeah. can't fake that, right? Uh, yeah. it, it, there's, I remember in, in internet marketing circles a few years ago when uh, Dr. Robert Cialdini's book, uh, Influence, came out. It kind of became, uh, it, it was positioned in internet marketing circles as kind of an underground manual for how to, uh, how to win customers and manipulate people. And I know that wasn't Dr. Cialdini's, uh, intention, but the idea right. is, oh, well, if, if it's all about, um, um, showing that you're interested in other people, then we can fake that and we can, we can get <laughs> them to do what we want them to do. What we're talking about today, Bob, is so far above any effort to try and manipulate or use this as a as a play this has to be uh, genuine it has to be authentic and you have to to really own this in your heart it does require a a transformation of your heart it can't just be another marketing strategy or what i'm saying is it's going to fail if you try to work this as a thing instead of a a heart centered approach mm -hmm. it's going to fail it's going to be very obvious and then you'll say well that didn't work for me but you're the one that uh did not give yourself over to this idea it wasn't real it wasn't authentic so we've got to we've got to really unlearn all of the marketing and the influence and the salesmanship and the jargon and you know 101 ways to close somebody and really get 
uh, on the same level with them, heart to heart, human to human, and learn how to make these genuine, authentic connections with people. That's really the secret behind this success of this, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. And remember, with Dr. Cialdini's work, which again, as you said, I mean, he's 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 um, communicating these principles, and they're powerful principles. But any principles, like anything else, can be used for good, or they can be used for evil. His, mm-hmm. his intent is for them to be used for good. Right. Um, you know, everybody who knows him just loves him, and and he's a, a very uh, righteous, <laughs> a wonderful man. Yeah. But you know, there's going to be people out there who are going to take you know, principles and they're going, you know, when I say principles, I mean, universal law, you know, I just mean things that, uh, well, like gravity. Okay. You know, you look at gravity, gravity just is. And if someone says, well, is gravity good or bad? Well, it depends how it manifests. <laughs> depends if, on where you're you know, at, it, right? good. <laughs> well, yeah, it's good when it keeps us from floating aimlessly up into space. Uh, it's bad when we fall off a seven story building. Okay. <laughs> and so it's the same with, with Dr. Cialdini's principles of influence. Uh, you know, it, you can use them for good in terms of positive persuasion to help someone to do something that's in everyone's best interest, or you can use them to, as you said, manipulate another right. person into doing your will. That, well, that's a bad thing. Yeah. And, and I agree with you. It's, it's, it's you know, not that there aren't people who haven't gotten away with doing those kinds of things and will continue to. It's a big world and there's, there's people out there, there are, but it's very difficult. It's hard work. It's very difficult to kind of keep up that front, yeah. especially on the internet these days. Uh, it's so easy to get found out. Right. If you're not really who you say you are, which is great. I mean, that's one of the, you know, the good, the, the, the internet is sort of a double edged sword in a, in a certain way. Yeah. But, but uh, the, the in market the way tends that it, it to, sort of, yeah, the market tends to uh, filter uh, weed those out, particularly yeah, yeah, in the day it, of uh, it, it reviews and, and ratings and so forth. Um, mm-hmm. I, 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 we, I cut you off at the law of influence. You've got two more um, laws to share with us. Yeah, well, you you alluded to one of them, the law of authenticity. Yes, law number four. And uh, this simply says the most valuable gift you have to offer is yourself. And mm. one of the men- the mentor in that part of the story, Deborah Davenport, uh, shared a lesson that she she learned that really ties into what you were saying. And that is that all the skills in the world, the sales skills, technical skills, people skills, as important as they are, and indeed they are important, but they're all for naught if you don't come at it from your true authentic core. Now, on the other hand, when you show up as yourself <laughs> uh, day after day, week after week, month after month, people feel good about you. They feel comfortable with you. They feel safe with you. They know you. They like you. They love you. They trust you. Uh, they want to be a part of your life. They want to be in relationship with you. They want to tell others about you. So, so coming from that true authentic base is just so very, very important. Mm. And then law number five, which kind of brings it home, is the law of receptivity. And the law of receptivity says the key to effective giving is to stay open to receiving. In other words, we don't just breathe out. We also breathe in. Right? Mm-hmm. We, you know, we breathe out carbon dioxide. We breathe in oxygen. We breathe out, which is giving. We breathe in, which is receiving. Contrary to the messages we receive from the world around us when it comes to prosperity, and the messages we receive are are not mixed messages. They're very negative messages (laughs) to a large extent regarding prosperity and money and so forth. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, contrary to to the uh, general belief, Giving and receiving are not opposite concepts. Uh, they're, they're two sides of the very same coin, and they work together in tandem. So it's not, you know, are you a giver or a receiver? That's that, that treacherous dichotomy, that false dilemma, if you will, that unnecessary use of the word or. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, you're a giver and you're a receiver. What you understand, though, is that the giving comes first. The yes. the focus on bringing immense value to the marketplace, uh, and when you do that, when you when you um, when your focus is on bringing immense value to others, bringing value to the lives of many others, placing the customer's interests first. 
coming at it from your authentic core, now you created what we call benevolent context for success. And you've created the, the, uh, the situation where you're going to receive, but you have to allow yourself to do so. And that can be difficult for people who've grown up with very negative messages about money. And, you know, on an unconscious level, it's gotten into their head and they think, well, but if people make money or not nice people or people who make money or, you know, well, it's, it's a big world. There's plenty of people out there. Certainly people do it in a way we wouldn't agree with. But no, especially in a free market based economy, the only way you can make a lot of money is to serve a lot of people and serve them well. Mm, that is so well said. And you're right. We do have a lot of money issues that we have to work through, most of them negative, and especially a lot of people that I interview and, and speak with and work with in the helping space, uh, coaches and, and consultants, yeah. healers, therapists, and uh, many of them coming from a background of I don't want to talk about money. I just want to do my thing, but they're not able to pay their bills. They haven't really right. worked out the giving and receiving um, synergy that you're talking about. And as a result, they're not able to make the impact. They're not able to make the influence that they could be making. And so everybody loses, including them, because they haven't resolved that issue. That's, ab yeah, that's absolutely right. And those in the healing arts and and coaching and so forth there, they really, that's a, that's an issue with them uh, because they, they, they see that, that uh, again, that treacherous dichotomy, you either, you either do well for the world or you make money. Mm -hmm. And of course, you, you know, the first thing they have to do. And when I speak with people like this, I, I ask, well, check your premises. Where did that come from? Why right. is that so? Yeah, I've had people say, uh, uh, you know, there's two people, two kinds of people in the world. Just as I'm going through this exercise with you, Bob, um, I, I have in in my mental uh, basement, there's a, a voice that told me a long time ago, uh, there are two kinds of people in the world, givers and takers. And he said, be a giver. I mean, he, he so he's, he's saying, yes, you know, be a giver instead of a taker. But as a result... Um, you're not getting the synergy of giving and receiving. And so you're really limiting uh, what impact you're able to make in the world. And it never occurred to me until this conversation with you, Bob, that that's a problem. <laughs> yeah. Well, and here's the thing, and this is a great point you touch on because it's pretty much all unconscious. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one of my great friends, Randy Gage, who is, is to me, he's become the, the leading authority at this point on, uh, on prosperity consciousness. And he certainly took himself from a, a real lack childhood to a, to now being very, very wealthy and, and in many ways, not just financially, but certainly financially. Um, but, you know, he makes this great point that if you watch any movie, any really real hit movie, it's typically, there are typically two types of people who are portrayed. There are the good people who are, who tend to be portrayed as, um, you know, the nice people who the good people, the nice people, they tend to be portrayed as poor, yeah. but happy. <laughs> and <laughs> right. And they're always being put down, stepped on, stepped over, taken advantage of by who? The rich, the evil, rich people. Right? <laughs> they're evil and cowardly. They have no soul. And, and you see that all the time. And you just watch movies from now on. You'll see that's practically always the case. Uh, he talks about the first Spider-Man movie uh, uh, where uh, Peter Parker is sitting on the couch with, with his Uncle Ben. And, and Uncle Ben says to him, Peter, we may not be wealthy, but at least we're honest. Ah. And you think about that message that's heard by children. Okay. And that message it's unconscious. It gets into their head because remember, it's not just that movie. It's every movie, right? It's every TV show. It's the, it's, it's what they hear from the world around them. And so what gets into your unconscious? Well, people with money aren't good people. They're not honest. They're not uh, nice. They're not kind. They're not this. They're not that. And then when you do come across those examples in real life, well, confirmation bias takes over. Yeah. Oh yeah, of course. That's right. They're rich. Of course they're 
greedy and they're awful and they're right uh, now. Of course, when you come across most people who are who who are wealthy and who are probably happy and kind and generous, well, we just kind of ignore that because right. that doesn't fit the narrative. <laughs> so and so it really messes up people because it's unconscious. And I can't tell you how many people have emailed John David Mann and me to say, you know, that last chapter about receptivity, it it finally gave me or it gave me permission to finally allow myself to receive. And I'm thinking, mm. well, I mean, it's a nice compliment that they took that from it, but it's also sad that they would need to see that in a book uh, when it's so natural to receive, you know, uh, to, it, it's very natural to give and it's very natural to receive, but we, we lose one of those along the way based on the messages we get. Yeah. And, and then we tend to go to one extreme or the other and, and we limit right. our potential and our influence, the impact that we're able to make in yes. the world. Um, th- that, I think that is a, a great way to begin to, uh, wrap up our conversation. Um, leading into this final question, um, why is it and how is it that being a go giver is absolutely congruent with and even honors human nature. Because when you look at the state of things, it seems like everyone is dog eat dog. Let's, you know, get all we can get. You're saying being a go giver is, is really congruent with human nature and it, it even honors human nature. How is that? Uh, that's the key. It honors human nature because what is, uh, what is human nature? Human nature says that a person, and I think Dale Carnegie said this. Excellently in his his classic How to Win Friends and Influence People, where he wrote, ultimately, people do things for their reasons, not our mm-hmm. reasons. So a go giver is always going to come at it from what's in it for the other person. What what is it that they're? How does what I'm asking this person to do? How does it align with that person's goals? How does it? satisfy what that person wants, needs, or desires? How does what I'm asking this person to do, how does it align with their values? What problems of theirs am I helping to solve? How am I helping their life to become better? Well, you you answer those questions, and you've got someone who's going to very happily buy from you. Hmm. Yeah. And you have honored them as a human you being, are, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, it's like um, uh, the the famous line in the Big Kahuna. Uh, once you begin to steer the conversation in the direction that you want it to go, you're not a you're not you're a marketer at that point. You're not a human being anymore. And I think that is so uh, so applicable to the time that we're living in, to the shifts that are happening in business. Uh, Consumers are becoming more and more aware of that. And you said it best, Bob. No one is forced to do business with you. They choose to do business with you and they choose for very their own reasons why they want mm-hmm. to favor you with their business. So um, I really appreciate you challenging us as rebelpreneurs to if, if we're going to break the rules and build the business we need for the life we want. It has to be about uh, being go-givers, learning how to give and receive, to create value, and being more concerned with how we can we can give and meet those needs. And if we do that, then we are going to be successful beyond mm-hmm. what we can even imagine. So this has really been tremendous. I'll leave you. Um, I'll, I'll give you the last word, Bob. Any final thoughts or words of wisdom? Uh, that you'd like to kind of sum everything up with? Well, I remember a a wise mentor telling me it was a couple of years after I got into sales. And I was somewhat successful, but not nearly where I I should have been. And it was really, he noticed that my focus was on me, not on, uh, not on the, uh, you know, the other person. And he, and I remember he said, Berg, if you want to make a lot of money in sales, he said, don't have making money uh, as your target. Your target, he said, is serving others. When you hit the target, you'll get a reward. That reward will come in the form of money, and you can do with that money whatever you choose. But never forget, he said, the money is simply the reward for hitting the target. Your target is serving others. Mm-hmm. And that's basically what Joe learned in The Go-Giver. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, this, it's been a real pleasure to connect with you, Mr. Bob Berg. Uh, Bob is the co-author of the international bestseller, The Go-Giver. 
and a much sought after speaker at sales and leadership conferences. He is committed to inspiring the entrepreneurial spirit in all of us. And I think that includes the rebelpreneur spirit as well, because if you really take this philosophy to heart, it is going to set you apart so favorably and give you such competitive advantage uh, in a positive way so that you can make greater income while making an impact, making money while making a difference. And as we've Learn today, there is no dichotomy in that. That is actually synergy that the world needs. I encourage our listeners, if you want to find out more about Bob Berg and you want to get started in learning this powerful philosophy of life and business, what Bob calls the Go Giver Way, then I encourage you to go to the website, thegogiver. Dot com, and we'll have that link on the Rebelpreneur website as well. Bob, thank you so much for being on Rebelpreneur Radio today. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Ralph. I appreciate you too. You've been listening to Rebelpreneur Radio with Ralph Brogdon. Download the show notes and much more at rebelpreneur.com.